Hey guys, I've got something very fun and quite interesting set up to you on the breadboard here, and uh, it's going to be a distortion test of the LM358 op amp. Now the configuration is very simple. I've got here on the on the left the output and the input respectively of my sound card, while on the right I've got the device under test, which is the LM358, and a simple rail splitter powered by this battery. So starting off very simple. Let's have a look at uh, the distortion performance of the sound card when I perform a loopback and uh, I give it simply a 1 kilohertz tone. Let's have a look. And to do this, we need to go and open the Arta app. Uh, let's do that quickly. Let's play capture. And yeah, there's a sound card. And the uh, loopback performance is a total harmonic distortion about yeah, 0. 0.5%, which is acceptable. Now, next step is let's plug it into the op amp and measure the distortion. And uh, that's uh, that's not good. We've nearly doubled our uh, harmonic distortion figure at uh, the same frequency. Let's have a look what happens if we increase the frequency now of our generator. So set up generator segments. Let's give it 10 kilohertz and see what happens. And uh, oh boy, now it's uh, around 1.5% THD. So why does this happen? The reason is actually quite interesting. And in order to understand this, we need to have a look at the um, at the schematic of the open. So the main parts that cause a distortion are going to be these uh, output transistors here. The L358 is wired as a very low current device and uh, to make it low current some compromise had to be made on the output stage and it's being run as a class B amplifier and uh, the main issue with this is that it requires a very high slew rate around the zero point to jump around the dead band and uh, get from one one state of the transistor being on to the other transistor being on. And it needs to happen very quickly for the sine wave to be elegant. And unfortunately, because of this, uh, or these, all of these actually low uh, current sources, there's just not enough current and not enough punch to cause the switching to happen uh, this quickly. Now, the question becomes, uh, can we improve the performance of this? by changing, let's say, the output, uh, output stage? And the answer is yes. Yes, we can. The simplest way to do it is by adding a uh, output, uh, output load, be it a current source or a uh, simple resistance between our output pin and either VCC or VE, respectively bypassing Q6, which is the NPM, or Q13, which is the PNP. So let's have a look what happens if we plug in a very simple resistance and uh, see how it, uh, how it handles. So there is again our uh, highly distorted side wave at 10 kHz from the op amp. And now I'm going to plug in a simple resistance and let's see how it does. So I'm going to plug in the resistance and uh, boom! Look at that! The distortion dropped down to our uh, essentially our fundamental from the function generator. Now that's a pretty good improvement. Of course, the same can be done if I bridge the other transistor, in this case the bottom transistor, by jumping from VCC to the output pin, and a similar uh, similar beha behavior occurs. And. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's usable. So what did we actually do? On the circuit, we bridged the output transistors and we're now running it as a class A amplifier on the output stage. And because of this, we're going to reduce the distortion. But of course, this comes with some costs. So for the amplifier, there's really three main characteristics for an audio amplifier. That is the distortion performance, the slew rate, and the noise flow. And as we just saw, the distortion performance of the op amp before was quite dismal. But with this, we improved its performance to something close to the residual, or definitely lower than the residual, 
of my sound card, which is which is usable. Uh, but uh, there are two other important uh, other parameters that we didn't touch. That is the slew rate of the op-amp and the noise floor. And uh, at this point, unfortunately, is where most uh, tutorials on this topic cut out online. So, for example, this uh, tutorial from uh, Rod Elliott, excellent write-up, um, really good pictures, but uh, unfortunately doesn't touch on the elephant in the room, which is slew rate. See, the slew rate of the LM358 is limited to about uh, 0.5 volts per microsecond. There it is. And uh, this is quite pedestrian. So at 20 kilohertz, it's enough to run maybe 4 volts uh, of output swing before uh, slew rate limiting hits in, creating yet more distortion. And that's not a lot. So the question becomes, can this be improved? Uh, the same goes for noise floor. So the noise floor of the uh, uh, LM358 is around uh, 40 volts or, sorry, 40 uh, nanovolts per root of uh, hertz. So, yeah, 40 nanovolts per root of hertz. And uh, this noise floor, unfortunately, is quite poor. While the noise floor, it, it easily can't be improved because it will require a complete uh, rebuild of the op amp using, for example, different parts, uh, different, uh, different topology, different layout, etc. The story can be improved. And the simplest way to improve the slew rate is by adding a, a slew rate multiplier. And one way to do it is like this. By using a um, simple common uh, common source output. So for simplicity, here in all these spikes, I've got two op amps set up. The right one is a g generic uh, configuration we've got on the breadboard. That's a voltage follower. It's got a gain bandwidth of uh, 30 and a slew rate of 10 respectively. And this is the same for both these op-amps. And uh, as can be seen, the op-amp, which has our... Uh, let me close this again. So let's, uh, let's do this again. So the first op-amp, which is wired simply as a voltage follower, it drops off quite rapidly. Whereas the second op-amp, with a slew rate multiplier in this case, it has a much, uh, much superior performance. Now, this does come with one major catch. That is, we have a uh, phase inversion, and we have a gain. And, uh, boom! It might oscillate. And if there's not enough uh, phase reserve, it will oscillate, and uh, this can happen. Which uh, does not happen with the stock op amp. And uh, this can also be solved with, for example, compensation networks and uh, other ways of slowing it down by reducing the amplitude, of, I guess, the gain at the instability frequency below unity, so it won't oscillate. But this is the second topic. And uh, I guess to recap, the LM358, it uh, can be used surprisingly well for low, um, I guess, low gain, easy, generic audio circuits. And, uh, of course, it's not a rocket ship, nor is it, uh, nor is it uh, a fantastic uh, miracle chip. But, uh, as far as price performance goes, it's uh, surprisingly decent and better than more people give it credit for. Now, a valid question becomes, is it even worth uh, bothering with this? And, uh, I think yes, if, uh, if a design can save some money, by having a different part and a creative design, then by all means. So do this information what you can and play with it and enjoy. Hey guys, so as a quick aside, let's do the actual sound test on these uh, cases using the very familiar iPhone jingle. Let's start very simple by just doing a loopback test. So when we feed our uh, jingle, through the sound card and back into itself. So let's start. Let's watch it. There was the jingle. Now let's go through the distorting situation where we don't have a changed output circuit. Let's 
connect it uh, here. And let me just put this guy here. Let's uh, launch the jingle and see how it sounds. Okay, and finally, let's test the same jingle, but with our fixed case, where we have a uh, resistive load and we bias it into class A operation. Okay, that was that. Thank you very much for watching.